Hello and welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Abby, and I have too many plants and they're all in this room. <laughs> I'm very excited today because I've been planning this video because this is the first week of spring and I want to do a plant tour to show you all my plants so that maybe at the end of the growing season we could do it all again and we could see like who's like who's who's grown, what new leaves have come out, that sort of thing. Because I see my plants every day so I don't really... Maybe I don't notice as much when they're doing great. I definitely notice when they're doing bad. <laughs> but, um, I don't know. I just kind of thought it'd be fun to show you all of my plants uh, on this, this first week of spring. I was actually going to shoot this video the other day on the equinox. Uh, but in true Canadian fashion, it was actually snowing. And you can definitely see out my window. So I felt stupid to be like, first day of spring, and then it's snowing outside. <laughs> So yeah, anyway, um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about all my plants as we go through this video. It'll be very, very long, I'm imagining. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about my, my grow lights, too. Um, if you've seen my other plant tours, there definitely are some plants that are different. We've definitely lost some. We've definitely gained some. We've definitely up-potted some, that sort of thing. They are all over the place now, and there are lots of grow lights. <laughs> Because there's only one window in this room, and it is east-facing. but uh, And I get a fair amount of light in there, but... There's only so much I can do, you know? So I've got four grow lights, and I've got a little humidifier, and I'm rambling because I'm excited to show you my plants. So you know what? Let's just switch my phone because it's easier to carry than this camera, and let's take a look at all my plants. Okay, so we're going to start over here at my desk because, I don't know, it just makes most sense to me. I did just finish getting ready, so if you happen to see my desk and it's like an absolute mess, that's because I just finished a full face of makeup. So this is my Dracaena, what's it called, Twisty? As you can see, it's lost a bunch of leaves lately, but now that I have this plant light here, this is new and it's actually clamped onto this little shelf here. It's getting some of the light from that, so it looks much better than it did. So we're just going to leave it there and let it grow. Up here, this is actually a goldfish plant. Ideally, uh, when this gets bigger, I'd love to put it in a hanging pot and then we'll get the little goldfish flowers. Hopefully, I've only ever had like two plants flower, um, but that's, that's what I'm hoping for. And the pot that it's in is actually a little cauldron my eldest sister 3D printed for me, so I love that one. Beside it, we have my latest attempt at a Pearls and Jade Pophos. Uh, I've killed about 400. So we're trying this one, and I actually have a fun story about the pot that it's in, because it's a mug from Spirit Halloween with, uh, like, the original Adams Family on it. And this mug, first of all, I think it would be impossible to drink out of, because it's square, and then the whole, the top is round, and then the inside is, it just looks like a recipe to get stuff all over yourself. But I wanted it for a plant, but it was like $35, and I refused to spend that much money on a mug for a plant, but then on November 1st, when everything was like 60% off, they had one left, so I bought it, and that's the story of my Adams Family mug. Here in this cute little tree planter, I have my only cactus. I literally bought this cactus because I didn't have one. Um, they call it the fairy cactus. I don't really know what that's about, but I think it's cute. Earlier this morning, I noticed these little spots, and I thought they were mealybugs, but they're not. They're just like little, like, nicks in the cactus so don't worry no bugs there i keep this little witch pot on my desk because it's maybe my favorite pot pot that i own i think she's so cute look at her with like this little kitty it's like charlie um they actually were selling these at a grocery store a couple years ago for like around halloween and they had like a succulent in it and my friend works at said grocery store and someone had knocked one of them over and the succulent came out. Um, so they couldn't sell it anymore because it was like damaged. So she just took it home and gave it to me and I love it so much. I think it's so cute. And inside of it, I just have a crocodile fern that I'm trying to grow. I think it's cute, but I don't know. We'll see. This one here, however, this is my squimiferum. It was much smaller when I bought it. And I recently put it in this giant pot, but it's like just sitting in it. It's in a nursery pot in there. I put it over here because it just takes up so much space that it was covering too many other plants over in my planty area. So, I don't know. Like, we'll see how it likes it over here. It's only been over here for a couple weeks. But for now, I quite like having it over here. I can look at it. I can see the new leaf coming in. I think it's gorgeous. And this little thing here, this is a magnet of the, the evil, like the witch when she's an old lady from Snow White. But I think she looks just like me. Like... I couldn't believe it when I saw that at, uh, I think it was Miniso, actually. I could not believe how much she looks like me. Um, so I bought her, and I took her home, and I put her on, like, the permanent 3M strip. And <laughs> she's just on my wall there. And down here, we have my latest attempt at uh, an English ivy. So far, so good, but I've killed many. So we'll see how this goes. I love this pot up here. I think it's so cute. I'm trying to try to scantia in it. 
I'm really bad with Triscantia, but so far this has been okay. If it dies, I'm going to put my fishbone cactus in it. But for now, we're okay. I water it like once every two weeks, but I only use a little bit of water because there's no drainage. And I hate things without drainage. It stresses me out. But this is what I have. So, I don't know. I think it's cute. It gets a fair amount of light from the window. Um... And we're just trying our best. I thought it was cute to have like a pop of a pink plant over here, you know? This is the most important thing that I'm growing right here. Lena. There's a sticker on my bed. Can't get it. Oh well. It's there forever now. <laughs> on my windowsill, we have my attempt at a Christmas cactus. It didn't look great when I bought it, and it still doesn't look great now. Uh, we're just going to leave it there forever and see what happens. I water it what I remember. <laughs> Beside it is my rosemary, and because it's so backlit, you can't really tell, but the pot says herbs for spells. So when I bought this rosemary plant, um, it was in a pot way bigger than that, and I just kind of unpotted it and shoved it into this little tiny nursery pot to get it in there, assuming it would die immediately, and it actually didn't. This is the first time I've ever had an herb for many, many months, and it's still alive. I water it every Sunday, like clockwork, and so far, so good. Like, see all that green at the top there? And I love keeping rosemary, not because I particularly love the smell or the taste, but they say rosemary is the herb of, like, wisdom. And I just feel like that's a good thing to keep around. Um, and I think the line from Practical Magic is, grow rosemary by your garden gate, right? So that's why I like to keep mine by the window. I don't know. It's kind of superstitious of me, but that's what we're doing. Beside it, I have seeds of herbs that I'm trying to start, but nothing has popped yet. I started these only a couple of, maybe a week ago. The other ones that I started in a vlog are in the kitchen, because there's a better grow light in there than just the window. I think there's, ooh, what's in there? Sage, lavender, uh, and milkweed, so that I can put it in the backyard for the butterflies. This is the same bear paw succulent that I've had for a very long time. Uh, I think I need to water it more often. I think that's why the little paws are so small. But it, it is the same one. I have not purchased a new one. Um, and it's just growing kind of big. Honestly, I don't really care how it grows. I think it's cool how it is. So we'll just let it live. Now the next addition, the newest addition, is this bar above my window. So here are my hanging pots. This is my Philodendron Brazil, one of my oldest plants. Um, I just keep cutting it and cutting it and cutting it and then potting it and giving it away. So that's that. Beside it here, we have a little, what do they call it, a burrow's tail succulent that I've also had for a very long time. But it's never grown very much because I didn't have it in good light conditions. So I'm hoping the window will help. And then this is a variegated string of hearts. Um, so I'm hoping those grow. I have nothing in this fourth one yet. Um, I'll figure out one of my other plants to put in there at some point, I'm sure. But for now, it's just the three that have, uh, plants in them. And you'll notice now as we move throughout my plant collection, there's a lot of Studio Ghibli figurines, um, throughout. So up here in the, in the Brazil, I don't know if you can see it. Hold on. In the Brazil, these little shapes here, they're little Totoros hanging from the basket. And then on this one, that little shape is a no face hanging from the basket. I didn't really have anywhere to put them, but I just kind of thought hanging from the baskets was the cutest idea. Moving on to my little greenhouse. Can I get it open with Grabby? Let's see. Okay, so closest to the window there is my Piper Crocatum. Uh, it makes me jealous because Fern, uh, her channel is Wild Fern, her and I got one about the same time, and hers is this big, beautiful thing, and mine only has one leaf. Uh, but it is what it is. <laughs> Beside it is my strawberry begonia, and then I've got my little pink princess. Uh, I think they call it the pink princess marble, because it's like a different variegation, but it just looks like the pink princess. And then on closest to the cloche is my oxalis. It only has three sort of flower leafy things right now, but that's what's growing in there. This is the Ikea Acrobar, and that was... Oh no, there's a... The magnet keeps getting stuck. That's what I was trying to do, because I put magnets on the sides to help keep it closed. Um, I don't know, they get good light over here because of the window, and I think it's cute, and my little witch sits on top there, so... I like this setup. And then this is my most recent Venus flytrap. Uh, I've purchased a million of these, and I'll probably just keep purchasing them, because I think they're cool. And I like them. And I, I like them. I don't know. I recently moved my Black Pagoda lipstick plant into this 
basket here because my goal this year is to get it to flower. I don't know what its flowers look like. I know what like the black pagoda lipstick plant flowers look like, but there's a bunch of different colors. So I want to know what mine are. So I put it here so it'll get a nice window. It's in a five inch pot in there. Um, I actually don't know like how much weight that command hook can take. So I'm just kind of living on a hope and a prayer here. Um, but I really want it to flower. That's my like goal for goal for the summer. So I'm going to like give it lots of fertilizer and let it have lots of light and just hope for the best. And then at the very top of the bookcase here is my Hoya Linearis. It's actually not doing great. I let it dry out too much all the time, every time. So I really got to get on that. <laughs> yeah, like straggly it is. That's why it's not up there because... I'm hoping I'll see it more here, <laughs> but I gotta get better at that. Before we move on to everything we have going on over here, we're gonna talk about these two just quickly. This is my Monstera, um, just like the regular Deliciosa. I've had this plant for a very long time. It was just a little thing when I first got it, and then it's been potted up, and it's finally putting out new leaves. It hasn't done that like since I chopped and propped it many months ago at this point, so I'm very excited to see it finally putting out new leaves. That's kind of how, how I knew that. Bless you, Lena. That's how I kind of knew that spring was coming, because it finally started pushing out leaves. And then down here is my Lemon Lime Philodendron, or Neon Pothos, or whatever it actually is. I recently put it up in this bigger pot. This is the same one I've had forever. Um, and it seems to like it a lot more than it liked being in a tiny little pot. Honestly, when I had it here, it was just taking up too much space. So I moved it down here. And because I have this on 0.5 zoom, it's like giving you a weird fisheye effect. I gotta fix that. All right, so do you remember a couple weeks ago when we put this daghorn fern in the frame? She doesn't look good. I'm almost wondering if she just doesn't have enough light here. Um, I don't know. She just doesn't look great. I don't know what's going on over there. <laughs> Let's move on to the plants that are doing great. We'll do the... I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> So this is my Loranta. It's kind of just always been there. It's planted in a big cauldron. I recently gave it this trellis because it was kind of flopping too much. Oh yeah, and behind the Loranta there's a snake plant that's not doing well, but it's... I bought it for my old office when I worked at the radio station, and then when I was laid off, it came here. I never really meant for it to come here. I kind of meant for them just to keep it. Um, but anyway, that was after like a year of no nobody being in the office because of the pandemic, so it wasn't doing great to begin with. And I don't have the heart to get rid of it, so it's just kind of there. But anyway, back to the Miranda. Miranda's great. She's fine. She's just hanging out. In front of it here is my, um, what is this called? Silver Sword Philodendron. It's planted in a pot that sits in one of my favorite David's tea mugs ever, but it's not microwave safe or dishwasher safe, so that's why I use it as a pot. <laughs> um, I would love to get this plant really big someday so that I can get the actual, like, sword-shaped leaves, but for now it's just little. Behind it is my Fetonia. She's cute. I know a lot of people struggle with Fetonia, but I don't. I don't know what that's about. It, maybe it's because I'm an overwaterer, but I like her. I think she's cute there. Uh, in front of it is the only Anthurium in my whole collection. This is the Anthurium Crystallinum. They, it came with a whole bunch of crisp, like crispy, ugly leaves. Like This is one of the leaves it came with, and this is the first leaf it's put out in my care. So I don't know where these holes came from <laughs> or how they got there. But it looks beautiful, nonetheless, and then it's putting out those two little ones, so it seems to be relatively happy here. I don't know where the holes come from, to be honest with you. I don't know what's going on there. But, it is what it is. This is my new, um, humidifier, because the old one decided to just stop working. <laughs> In the cloche is my Begonia Amphioxus. I can't remember the last time I opened that cloche. I pretty much never open it. And that plant is thriving, so we just leave it. <laughs> Uh, this is my Stromanthe. I think she's beautiful. She's like a Clavia, right? So she needs a lot of water and humidity. That's why she's right beside the um, humidifier. Um, I don't know. Again, a lot of people struggle with uh, Calatheas. I don't seem to struggle with this. I've had it for a very long time, though, and it's still very small. So I don't really know what that's about. Yeah, she's still just kind of little. Behind it here with the monster from... The monster, the robot, if you will, from Council's Castle in the Sky, who insists on falling over is my Alocasia Jacqueline. She has never had more than two leaves and the one baby leaf. I don't know what she wants from me, but there she is. Uh, in the front here, this is the Philodendron... Oh my god, it's dusty. I just dusted it the other day. Philodendron Mayoi. I don't know how to say that. 
Uh, she used to be on my desk, but I moved her over here. Um, I also chopped her because she had like one long vine, and then I tried to propagate the vine, but it rotted. But it's putting out this new growth point here. So I'm hoping she'll look better in a couple of months. And then down here in the bulb store is just a little succulent I bought. I don't know much more about it, but I, I thought it was cute. <laughs> I just bought this Skindapsis Green Army at a market the other day. I don't know too much about it, but I thought it was cool. So we're going to see how it grows. But like, I've literally only had it for a week, so we'll see. Beside it here is my rattlesnake glavia that I've had for a very long time and in this tiny pot for a very long time. It grows and grows, but doesn't really seem root bound and it doesn't seem unhappy, so I'm just going to keep it in this tiny little pot because I like it there. But it's happy. It's good. This little, like, veiny plant in the back here, I honestly don't know too much about it, but I thought it was cute. And it was in this little pot on the display and I thought they were cute together, so I bought them. That was literally it. No more thought than that. And then beside that is my domino peace lily. Honestly, it kind of drives me nuts there because peace lilies like really lean towards the light, so it's always like over things. I need to find a different spot for it, to be quite frank with you. After I rotted my last philodendron mygins, I really waited a long time to buy a new one, and then I bought this one. And I think it's really cute. It's just in this little, little four-inch pot. That is also a contender for the fourth spot on my windowsill. I haven't fully decided yet. I think it's too big for this little spot in the corner here. But the problem with having a million plants is that they grow, and then I don't have spots for them as bigger plants, so... Oops. Down here in the front is my philodendron tortum. It really doesn't grow, so we won't have that problem. <laughs> like, it put out this leaf the other day for the first time, and I've had it for many, many, many months. Um, so I'm not worried about that one. <laughs> this is a philodendron brantianum. This is a newer addition to my collection, too, but when I bought it, um, it was in a very tiny pot, so I took it out, switched all the soil, um, and cut off a really big, long vine that was kind of spindly uh, to keep it sort of more bush shaped and the cuttings are actually in my cuttings over there but we'll get there um I really like it I think it's beautiful and I really like it in this spot I know it's not anywhere near being root bound so we're good and I'm interested to see it hasn't kind of activated any growth points from when I cut it yet but I'm interested to see what it does in my mushroom planter that used to be on my desk uh, I have this begonia I, I I put the begonia in the mushroom planter because when I propagated it I accidentally let, let the stem way too long <laughs> so the stem is like all the way down in the bottom of the all the way down to the bottom of the mushroom inside. But it worked out, because it looks nice. And look like, look at how nice the leaves look. I don't know, I think it looks good. That was an accidental great spot for it. This is my latest attempt at a Hoya Cretaceae and sort of putting it on a trellis. As you can see, it's already not doing great. <laughs> but um, I really want it to grow well. And actually the cover pot that this sits in is a pot that my younger sibling painted for me. It's got whooper and quagsire all over it. Look how freaking cute it is. I love it so much. I'm never getting rid of it. I'm keeping it forever. If there's a fire, I'm saving this pot because I think it's so freaking cute. And then just down here in the front, I have a Hoya Australis Lisa. It's just little. I just bought it. I don't really know much about it. Um, but my mom said that I can put some of my plants on the front porch this summer. And I'm thinking all of my, well, not all of my Hoyas, but most of my Hoyas. Um, so that'll be going out there, so will some of the other ones that you'll see in a bit, but not the, the Linearis, because I just feel like bugs will get caught up in that, you know. Here we have my Pride and Joy, my Thai Constellation. When I bought it, it was $100 for a little 4-inch pot that had, like, three leaves, and now you can get them at, uh, like, Canadian Tire for 20 bucks. <laughs> but I don't care. I love her. I think she's beautiful. She's this is the most recent leaf she gave me, but she's working on a new one. I can see it on the side over here. I gave her this, um, wow, that moss is dry. I'm supposed to water her today, so I'll do that after the video. But I gave her this, uh, moss pool not too long ago, and I just think she's thriving. She's beautiful. We love her. Her and my fiddle, which is funnily enough the next plant we have to talk about, are my pride and joys. Because I know that fiddly figs is a plant that a lot of people struggle with, and I struggle with it too. Don't get me wrong. Like, it lost totally leaves when I first got it. But somehow I've made it happy. I don't know what it is. I think I've had it for, what is it, like three years now? It was just a little pot when I got it, and now it's not a huge pot still, but look how good it looks. I don't know what happened. Some kind of magic. <laughs> but that's my fiddle. I'm so happy about her. Now we're coming all the way back over here to do the midsection. So in the back there, I have my um, fishbone cactus. I was really disillusioned with it for a long time because it doesn't have very many fronds. 
I'd like to buy another one and pop them together, but I'm also just focusing on taking better care of that one now, honestly. I really like it, so if that Tretoscantia dies, I, I, like, I will put that in there gladly. But, I don't know, I think it's cute and I like it. And then on the shelf here, I don't have too many. I've got an air plant, a Hoya, is it the Crimson Princess, I think? But it's just little, um, but that one will go outside if I put my plants outside. And then this little thing here in the ice cream pot is just uh, some, like, cuttings and propagations. It's actually, like, a, in a shot glass in there. Uh, I've got propagations from the Tretoscantia, propagations from the Brantianum, and I think that's pretty much it. One piece of Silta Pagana. Here we have the world's most depressing string of spades. Um, there's really not much more I can give you than that. If it looked better, I would put it as the fourth plant up there, but it doesn't look better, and there's no way it's going to ever look better, so we just let it be depressing. <laughs> Um, as far as the ones that hang off the planters go, this is the Pothos uh, Mandrula that I've had for a long time. It was actually on my desk, um, and then I decided to put the little cactus there and move this over here, and it, I had this for like, what, a year? And I never put out a single leaf, actually a couple leaves died. And then I put it over here, and all of a sudden, two leaves. So it's much happier over here with the new grow light that I just bought. So you'll notice this light is a little different than the one that I used to have. The one that I used to have was just like a generic one from Amazon. This is by the brand Sansi. So it is also from Amazon. But this brand is a little like more highly known. People know Sansi as good lights. Um, so far I've actually already, it's only been a couple of weeks, but so far I've already seen like really great growth from my plants with it. And one of the things that I do like about it is that the other ones you, every time you want to replace it, you have to replace the whole thing. You can't just change the bulbs. Whereas this one, you can change the bulbs. Um, con to this is that the bulbs get really freaking hot. The other ones are, like, LED, and I thought this was also, like, LED, but I accidentally touched one once, and I'm telling you I burned my hand, and then so I messaged them on Amazon. I was like, hey, are these supposed to get really hot? And they're, apparently they are. <sighs> so that's my only downside. So be, be a little careful, because they get really freaking hot. But, um... Other than that, they seem to be really good for my plants. So I told you about the Manjula, and I almost skipped over the Silta Pecana. The Silta Pecana is another contender for the fourth planter up there, because it looks like it could be a really good hangy plant, but it is just... That constellation, get out of the way. It is just growing out of here like craziness. Like, it wants to bust out. So it might have to go up there just to give it some space. But that pot up there is smaller than this. So, I don't know, I'm confused and torn and I don't know what to do about my Silta Pagana, but I do love it. Actually, I've been thinking about getting rid of my skeleton planter that I made on my channel because it just takes up so much space and it's just got a golden pothos in it and, like, maybe putting the Silta Pagana there. <gasps> or we just take the golden pothos out and we put the Silta Pagana in it. I didn't think of that until right now. Hmm, maybe, maybe. Oh, wait! Let's come back down here for a sec because I forgot to show you the other Ghibli figures that are down here. So, I showed you the the robot from Castle in the Sky. I don't know if you can see, but there's also um, the little thing with the, the little tattoos in it, the little fox squirrels. Um, we've got Bo from Spirited Away down here. And then Baron from the Cat Returns is supposed to be right there, but I don't know where he is. Found him. He had fallen on the ground. So... Just so he'll so dry he doesn't want to stand up, but that's barren. So now we're coming over here because this shelf is the Spirited Away shelf. So Bo should really be up here. But um, in the money tree, we have Bo and the little bird from Spirited Away. And then in this alocasia that is dying are the three heads. I've been thinking about getting rid of this alocasia actually and putting the uh, pink princess from my... What's it called? From my greenhouse here because they're the same pot size. <sighs> but I don't know. We'll see what happens. Beside it here is my string of hearts. I trellised it. I know people don't really do that, but I had it hanging on one of the bookshelves, so I just decided to do this, and I think it actually looks really cool. And in the string of hearts is the dust spirits, the soot sprites, if you will. And behind it, in the skeleton planter, is the radish spirit, and there's a kodama up there as well. Uh, but you see what I mean? Like, I just feel like the leaves of the Golden Pothos take up too much space over here. Like, no one else can see. But maybe the Silta Pecana would be better because they're smaller. One of my latest additions to the shelf over here is the train from Spirited Away. And if you look really close, you actually can see that No Face and Chihiro are in there. Very cute. But Chihiro is also right here in my Haworthia. Looking up at Haku. Haku's little figure actually doesn't exist. I look for 
all of my figures on, like, AliExpress and that sort of thing. There was, like, none of Haku, except for there was one of him in, like, human form that looked stupid. It was ugly. Um, so my eldest sister, three, printed this for me and painted it. So I absolutely love Haku. He's, like, my most cherished of my little figures. Um, so he sits there so that Chihiro can look up at him. And then, of course, staring down at them all from in my Raven's Easy is Yubaba. My Raven's Easy plant, let me tell you, if you watch my other videos, it did have a Howl's Castle in it. But it's putting out so much shoots that it was the, the castle, there wasn't enough room for it. Like, so many new shoots in my Raven's Easy. Just all of a sudden, out of the blue the other day. So it's doing very, very well right there. I'm not moving it. It'll, it'll live there forever, I think. I neglected to show you, but um, Howl's Castle and Turnip Head, since they no longer fit in the ZZ plant, are now happily in the Thai Constellation, because there was lots of room. I don't really know what this is. Philodendron Cream Splash or something. I got it in a plant trade with a couple of my friends. It wasn't doing well, and it kind of wasn't doing well when I first got it, but now it's putting out some leaves. So hopefully I'm bringing it back from the brink, and it's got my knitting no face. <laughs> so I really like it, and I really hope it is happier. And then I hate that she's, like, hidden behind it, because Ariadne's my favorite, but this is the only figure of her that exists, and it's so big that I had nowhere else to put it. And then up here at the top is my Philodendron Splendid, which is bouncing back quickly from a spider mite infestation. He is putting out a bunch of new leaves. Um, so I would love to get it on a moss pole someday, but I only put it in this pole, like on this trellis recently. So we're going to hope it does well. And then hidden in that pot, if I can get you high enough, is... I knocked over a bunch of pots, but they're empty, so it's fine. Um, is Porco Rosso and the plane. Let's see. There's the plane, and there's Porco. Cute. Here is my Dracaena Janet Craig, my oldest plant, one of the first ones I ever bought. She has not grown very much because I forget about her. <laughs> I neglect her, but she's got a little Kodama. I still love her. I think she actually, she's getting way better light with these fancy lights, so maybe she will grow. They're sort of dusty, but I really love my little mushroom house and my little Totoro's here. The mushroom house is from Dollar Tree, and the little Totoro's are from a pack I bought on Wish, I think. And then in my little umbrella plant here is um, Satsuki and May with the little truck that brings them to their new house. I just love little toys. Like, I really always hoped that I would grow out of that someday. But it never happened for me. <laughs> like, I still love little toys. And having plants, it gives me such a great space to do things with them. Now, there's supposed to be a Ponyo there. Where did she go? It's a good thing I have such scrawny hands because Ponyo had fallen behind and I just, like, whoop, picked her up like the crane game. So there's Ponyo. Yes, I really need all these plants. Um, uh, There's nothing in that propagation container at the moment because I haven't cut anything up re recently. In my Monstera Antonia here, which is one of my newer additions. I just really, really wanted one again. I've got La Puta from Castle in the Sky. I thought it was so cool that I could find a little figure of La Puta. And then that's also in this. I don't know what this is. Oh, I just got this one too. Same with this Kidapsis. I don't remember what that one's called. Frick, and it's got the little... I gotta look. Monstera Stangeliana Aurea. I am typically good with Monsteras, so I guess that was probably the logic when I bought it. But it's got the plane from Castle in the Sky in it. Um, and then there's my little obsidian no-face that my younger sibling bought me. Uh, in the back there is my Hoya Carnosa, just like the standard Hoya. I've had that one for a couple of years now, and it's hardly grown, so I'm looking really forward to putting that one outside. It will not be going outside in this pot. I'm going to buy it a dollar for a pot because that's one of my favorite ones, and I don't want to risk it getting broken. Um, but it, it's going outside. Up here with Kiki, we've got my Philodendron Florida Green, and there is one vein of vine of Philodendron Florida Beauty in it. So this one here, um, is, see how that one's like speckled? That's the Florida Beauty, so it's not just dust, <laughs> although there is some dust. I try to wipe these down all the time, but I can't keep up. So this is Florida Beauty, uh, because I just bought one vine of it, and I was like, I'm not going to keep this as a whole separate plant, so I just put it in with the Florida Green. I don't know. I really like it. I think it's beautiful, and I love that Kiki just rides in it. Um, over here, we've got, in this cat planter, we've got this, my asparagus fern that looks horrific, but I don't want to give up on it yet. So, <laughs> it's just living there. My Hoya Carii. 
little hearts. They're definitely going outside this summer. Hopefully they'll have some growth. Because right now they've got nothing. They're just two hearts. <laughs> so we'll see. And then with Cat Bus, this is my Cebu Blue. Uh, I forget about my Cebu Blue a lot. And I never water it. But it, it's okay. So that's all that matters. And it's on that infamous uh, Bath and Body Works candle holder. It just, it, it's it's funny. I've got like so many like green witchy cottage quarry things over here mixed in with some like creepier things like the the hands and that's sort of my vibe right green witchy but also some creepy things in the back corner there the reason it's shoved in the back corner is because it's getting some light from the halo light over there um this is a ficus shivriana i bought a bunch of these and i've killed every single one so we're hoping this one lives this is a new spot i've tried different spots each time um but we're gonna see i hope it lives and then this is the Skindapsis Milk Confetti. Is that what it's called? Skindapsis Milk Confetti. I think it's a Skindapsis, isn't it? The Arrowhead one? What is that? Oh, wow. My brain is dying. But it's the Milk Confetti variety because it's got some, like, pinky spots in it. See? That one's unfurling. And it's generally kind of light. I don't know. I think it's cute. I almost wonder if it wants more humidity because the leaves take forever to unfurl. Ah, but it's fine. It's fine. Over here with my many ponyos is my propagation station. So there's a ponyo there, a ponyo there, and a ponyo in the back corner there. Um, lots of propagations, lots of golden pothos propagations. I think there's a micans in there. This, the reason the other one is empty is because this is where they usually go, um, is over here because the light is so good. This is just, I searched Halo plant light on Amazon and I bought, how many of these do I have? Two? I think there's only the two. Um, you'll see the other one after. Um, so there's those, uh, my propagations. And then up here in this little basket is just spider plant babies. My plant is just leave them in there forever. They were in LECA before, but LECA became more work than it was worth. So they're just staying in water forever now. Ugh. I tried to speed run a little bit through this because there's so many. Ugh. And I kind of wish I would have taken more time, but it is what it is. So moving on to this side, you'd never know it, but this plant, hold on, I want to zoom out a little bit. This one is one of my babies. I bought this, Dr Dracaena, what is it? Is this a lemon lime? I know it's a Dracaena, but I don't know what variety. I bought it just like as a little thing at Walmart, and I have grown it and watched it grow, and it has grown so big and beautiful, and I forget to water it all the time. Uh, because I don't like, it's just like the very top of my reach up there, on, on top of Roger's tank. But it's beautiful, and I love it, and I'm so proud of it for growing so well. It's my child. <laughs> Um, and then down here, so something about me is that I try alocasias all the time, as you have seen from over there, and I always kill them. I don't know what it is, so a little while ago, m many months ago at this point, I, I, like, cut all the ugly leaves off, and I just threw all the corms and the bulbs in Roger's tank, and most of them took. I actually think all of them took. So I'll show you that in more detail in a second, but this one also took with, um, what, what's his name? Oh... Uh, Oh my god, from Ponyo. Sosuke? I think so. But anyway, this is just a black leaf, or a black velvet alocasia, and it put out this leaf in the tank, so I, I very carefully unpotted it and put it in this little self-watering pot, and now, as you can see, it's putting out another leaf. So, talking about Roger's tank, let's go in here, because I like to just throw plants in here and hope for the best sometimes um so this is like the alocasia area as you can see i recently actually put another alocasia in here because i forgot to water it and the roots looked horrific and i don't know like it was either garbage or i put it in here and we see if it grows or the isopods eat it it's an experiment so we'll see how it goes um but yeah so this little alocasia area over here does really well i don't know why but it does um, so I've got lots of golden pothos in here because it just grows and grows and grows. I've got this big Mikan's vine. It's just one vine coming out of this little pot here, and it, like, wraps all the way around the tank. Fun little story about these little pots. If you remember, like, if you watched before, I had these, like, little glass pods, and they're actually for aquariums, and I had them there, and they were great. And one day, they just decided to not stick anymore. The one in the back decided to not stick, and it fell, and it actually... I say shattered, but it broke into like four pieces. So I threw it out, and then immediately after, this one broke as well. So these are just normal nursery pots with, I like 
put holes in the back and then stuck these dollar store suction cups to it. So that's a little DIY project that I managed to do all by myself. Um, but yeah, so the, the one in the back here is a piece of golden pothos, and then this one is a Mikan's. I also have a little uh, ZZ plant baby. There it is, hidden in the back over here. It's only got two, I think, stems, uh, but it's in there. Lots of lots of snake plants. Um, there was only two to begin with. This one at the back here, and this one, and then it put out this baby, and then it put out another baby in the back. Um, and then this is my poor baby tears. It was growing great. It was beautiful. It was luscious. And then Roger decided to dig it up. This is like the third one he's d he's dug up at this point. So I give up. He likes to lay his eggs over here. So I really just have to stop trying to put a plant here. It just feels stupid to have this big open space. But he must lay his eggs there. So I'll let him. I keep wanting to throw this out because it's just like a matted mess. But what if the isopods eat it? So I'll leave them in there. And I think the only other plant in here is I have a little Dracaena Janet Craig tucked in over here. Um, it also doesn't ever get watered. <laughs> I forget about it all the time. But it's doing all right, honestly. I think it's cute. I just wanted some greenery over here so that it wasn't like a desert wasteland. Where is Roger? He's usually on that piece of wood in the back, but he's not there today. I can't find him, like, ever. <laughs> he's too good at hiding. And I'm not a very good seeker, but the truth of the matter is, that's kind of the point, right? You want your gecko to feel safe and hidden. I just did too good of a job. He's not smart enough to escape, so. I'll close that up. These are the isopods. They're not plants, so we're not going to talk about them, but they live in there. God, they need more leaves and stuff. I didn't even notice. They, like, ate most of it. This is a succulent over here that is going to die. Look at it. It doesn't look good. It was beautiful and variegated and had more than two leaves when I first got it. And now it... <laughs> Great. I gotta get something else for there. This is called... What is it? Creeping Charlie? And I literally bought it because I was told it was called Creeping Charlie. And Charlie is one of our cats and I thought it was cute. I've been told it's a weed, but I find it hard to take care of. It like likes water way too much. I like forget about it over here. <laughs> Even though it's got my pride and joy with it, which is my Marble Queen Pothos. This plant is massive. It's my child. It was just a little baby thing when I first got it. I actually can't even take it out of that that ceramic thing anymore because it's too heavy. So this is the, like one of the only plants. This and the one by my bed are like the only two plants that don't, air quotes, have drainage. It drains into the thing, but I can't pick it up to drain it. So I just kind of have to hope for the best. But it's growing really well and it recently started putting out, like, I was worried about it getting kind of bulb-headed. Which it was, like those leaves were dying. Um, but it started putting out more babies there. So we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. And they grow up the walls. And then I put these leaves there and we clip them in soon. Like this, this is where I cut it, obviously. Soon this piece will get long enough that I can put it back in there. I should just take that one down. <sighs> I don't know. I would love if it grew up the wall and just like took over. Like just absolutely take over this room, Mar Marble Queen. It's yours. Like I love this plant. I think it's so beautiful. I just, I don't know what it is, but I just think the foliage is so beautiful. And it's such a simple plant. Not every plant has to be crazy unique. I just think it's beautiful and I love it. And now we're leaving my room. I know, shocker. But I take care of these three. This is just a snake plant. This is a baby spider plant. Ooh, I gotta chop some of these ends off. And then this was a baby from my, or a bunch of babies from my Marble Queen. But it looks like it only has one left. How sad. Look at that. Oh, that's so sad. It's the... Oh. Poor baby. And finally, in the bathroom, I also take care of this Philodendron Painted Lady that's up there. And then over here, we have my rubber tree, my Ficus Teneki. Um, this Rip Salis, that was just cuttings my mom got from a friend that I propagated and put in here. Oh, it's not focusing. Um, I should really water it. I gotta water so many plants today, man. Um, and then this golden pothos that I got for free at an event. <laughs> but I think that's everything. Now, I really like the Rip Salis. I hope it grows. It's like, well, that's not rooted. <laughs> <laughs> but the rest of them are, I hope. Yeah, that one is. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking now before I wreck something else.
And anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you supporting me on my plant journey. You know me. If I like something, we go full into it. Like, I can't ever just like something a little bit. That's why I have, I think I counted 85 plants? 85. Maybe it was 84. Somewhere in the 80s, that's how many plants I have. That is way too much for, for one girl, but I'm not getting ready back any of them. <laughs> Again, thank you so much for watching. I love you so much. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. I'm so close to 4,000 subscribers. So close. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye!